Hello and a warm greetings from Italy to all the friends of Palm Beach Chess. This is International Master Camilla Giovanno and in this video I would like to invite you to see a very famous endgame. So let's see what it is about. I'm talking about an endgame with Rook and Pawn against Rook. And we all know that White would like to promote to Queen uh, and Black is doing his best to keep White's King in front of the Pawn so that white will not be able to advance it and promote. Okay, so how is white going to open up the way for the pawn to advance? Well, we know that he can simply check black's king and send it two files away from the pawn. Obviously, if he goes up, then king goes to f8 and then white will be able to promote. So black, after the check, has to go away on the d file somewhere and so he will be two files away from the pawn. Now obviously white can't just uh, go out with the king to have a walk because black will simply put him in check all the while. So if the king moves away from the pawn the rook goes behind it and white can't promote. He has to go back and defend the pawn and after the check even if the king tries to uh, go further on Black will simply put the king in check and the king has to return and protect the pawn, otherwise it gets taken. So that was not the solution. So after, let's go from the start. So first check, after king to d7. Now white should be able to cover the king with his rook when it will be put in check. Therefore we know that we have to build up a bridge by pushing the rook up to e4. Black will try to keep the king in front of the pawn, but anyways, he can escape. And then the furthest that he can go from the pawn is on the fifth rank. And guess what? After this check, now the king can be covered. And even if the rook's trade, black's king is far away from the pawn. It is not in the square. Okay, so even if he approaches the pawn, we can promote to queen and then we all know how to win, right? Good. And let's go from the start and let's see the whole solution again. So check. King goes to d7. Rook to e4. Remember, whatever black does, white goes up. Even more. Still defend the pawn. Check go away check and finally he can cover the king and so he wins after promoting good but my challenge to you today is what if white will have an extra pawn from the beginning and this is quite tricky because it presents uh, some advantages and in the same time some disadvantages so let's see what this is about well the disadvantage obviously is the fact that the pawn is blocking the way of the king so he will not be able to go up anymore okay because it's blocked okay so obviously this does not work the king cannot escape from g8 because of black's king and black's rook okay so probably one check is needed okay we will see the advantage instead. The advantage is that having the pawn on g6 means that the pawn on g7 is already covered. So if somehow white will be able to move the king away, even if black brings the rook behind the pawn, it will not be able to attack it. And so white will be able to promote. This is a great advantage. Therefore, the only thought of winning that white might have is that of trying to make room for his king to simply run away. And how is he going to do that? Well, this is a very beautiful solution because white will sacrifice the rook on the sixth rank. Now, if black takes, white will be able to move away the king and thus opening the way for the pawn to go up and promote. Even if black checks the king, the king goes on e8 and then 
uh, he will promote. Obviously, black can't put the king in check. Even if he goes here to threaten the checkmate, white will promote queen and check the king. So black does not have the time to go and checkmate white's king. Great. So let's go from the beginning. Check king to d7 and white plays rook to e6. Well, obviously black will not take because he has calculated the whole variation. But he still has another idea. Um, by bringing the rook to e6, white simply wanted to build a bridge. So he wants to go with the king out and after black will check the king again, white will be able to cover it. So for example, if the rook moves here, white goes up, check, rook comes in front of the king and then white will promote. Good. So black does not have time to uh, wait. Good. So let's see. Rook to e6. So in this moment, black should play rook to f2 and so block the king from escaping on f7. What is white going to do in this case? Because if he goes on the h file, the rook will check it and have to go back. And the rook comes back. <laughs> so again, the most unthought of double sacrifice. Okay, so white will sacrifice the rook for the second time because if black takes, the king goes to h7, defending the pawn on g6, and black can't stop the promotion. He can't go back because white will simply take it and promote. Very well. So black should not take the rook, but he has another idea. He will try a perpetual check. So he brings the rook on e2 so that if the king goes up, now he will try to check it all the time and then go back. So white has to come up with another idea. And he has a brilliant idea because now he will move the rook backwards all the way simply to free up some space for the rook to go out, for the king to go out. And so, what is black going to do? Because if he brings the rook on h2 to control the h file, the king goes to f7 and his file is covered. Black cannot put him in check anymore. Okay, so what is black going to do? He will bring the king, not allowing the king to go out on the f file anymore. But now, white will simply cover the king on the h file. So, black's rook can't go on the h file anymore. So, whatever black does, white will simply move the king and then promote. It is possible to even bring the king to h7. Let's see this. Then check. King to f7, rook to f7, and then promote. So, this is how white wins this challenging endgame. So let's see the solution alone. First check. Rook sacrifice. Building the bridge on the sixth rank. Rook to f2. The second sacrifice. Rook to e2. Go back. King to e7. Rook h1. The king moves away. It's possible even on f8. And then promote. And so white wins this endgame. I think this is such a special endgame because white found a brilliant idea of how to cover the king by building up the bridge on the 6th rank because it was not possible anymore uh, on the 4th rank because the king had no exit through g6. And so white not only sacrificed the rook once, but he sacrificed it twice. <laughs> and black had to refuse both times. Well, I hope that you really enjoyed this example of an end game study with rook and two pawns against rook. This is International Master Camila Chobano again, wishing you a most happy day. All the best.